TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem. And in today's top stories... Israel's political crisis persists despite continued efforts by incumbent Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu to form a new government. The Atomic Energy Organization of Iran announces that it will continue to scale back the country's commitments under the 2015 nuclear agreement with world powers. Russian President Vladimir Putin condemns last month's attack on Saudi oil facilities, yet insists, in contrast to the United States, Europe and Saudi Arabia itself, that there is no evidence of Iran's responsibility. Incumbent Prime Minister and Likud Chairman Benjamin Netanyahu and former Defense Minister and Israel Beitenu Chairman Avigdor Lieberman held a meeting this morning for the first time since the September 17th elections as part of Netanyahu's efforts to form a government. The meeting came in light of a decision by former IDF Chief of Staff and Blue and White Chairman Benny Gantz to freeze all negotiations on a possible unity government after the long-time ruling Likud party was said to have refused preconditions upon which Blue and White agreed to negotiate. Instead of meeting with Gantz, Netanyahu held consultations with the leaders of the right-wing ultra-Orthodox bloc, who reportedly unanimously approved today's meeting with Lieberman. Consequently, the incumbent Prime Minister called his former Defense Minister last night, during which he told him that there is no point in wasting the country's time, and that a meeting between the two leaders was vital to evaluate whether their discussions are serious or not, and based on that, a decision can be made. Following their phone conversation, Avigdor Lieberman reiterated in a written statement on his Facebook page, all of our efforts are to establish a national unity government that consists of three parties, Israel Beitenu, Likud, and Blue and White. This position was clarified before the elections, during the elections, and after the elections, and also today after the meeting of our party leadership. Lieberman further underscored that Israel Beitenu will not partner with any other government formation. Meanwhile, following the meeting between Lieberman and Netanyahu this morning, a Likud official told TV7 that no breakthrough had been achieved. While well, Israel Beitenu source informed TV7 that Netanyahu seems to be preparing the ground ahead of returning his mandate to President Reuven Rivlin and that white gaps remain between Likud and blue and white, which lessens the viability of a unity government to emerge. The source also echoed his party leader's unwavering position in which the only way to assure Israel's security and peace, both domestic and global, is to bridge the gaps and form a national unity government. Now to the Islamic Republic, where the Atomic Energy Organization of Iran announced that it will continue to scale back the country's commitments under the 2015 nuclear agreement with world powers. In a written statement, it emphasized that if other parties to the nuclear deal respect their obligations and implement them, the Islamic Republic of Iran too will return to the full implementation of the deal. As such, the statement read, the Atomic Energy Organization of Iran will press ahead with its broad scientific and strategic activities in order to secure new potentialities in different hardware and software domains within the framework of national regulations and commitments under the Nuclear Safeguards Agreement until the desired objective is achieved. It is important to note that this statement came after Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei instructed the organization to keep reducing the Islamic Republic's commitments under the nuclear accord until Tehran's desired objective is achieved, while stopping short from elaborating on the referred to objective. Speaking to members of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, Ayatollah Khamenei also mentioned that he obstructed efforts by U.S. officials to facilitate a meeting in coordination with Washington's European allies between Iranian President Hassan Rouhani and U.S. President Donald Trump. He claimed that any meeting between the two leaders would be viewed as an Iranian surrender. <laughs> رئیس جمهور کشورمون رو وادار به ملاقات کنن به التماس هم افتادن رفاقای اروپاییشون هم واسه قرار دادن همیشون هم آمدن رفتن تا آخر هم موفق نشدن the comments by Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei appeared to contradict President Hassan Rouhani, who insisted during a cabinet meeting in Tehran that the Islamic Republic is not the one who backs away from negotiations ایران از مذاکره فرار نمیکنه ایران پای میز مذاکره است 
President Rouhani further insisted to his cabinet ministers that efforts to preserve the 2015 nuclear deal is not yet over, as Europe and others continue to try and salvage what remains of the accord. راه تمام نشده مسیر بسته نشده باز هم اروپایی ها دارن تلاش میکنن باز هم دیگران دارن تلاش میکنن Despite the contradictory claims by Iran's leadership, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo revealed that European nations have begun to wake up to the fact that Iran is the aggressor. During a joint press conference in Rome alongside his Italian counterpart, Luigi Di Maio, the American top diplomat reiterated the importance of staying united against Iranian aggression while commending Italy for renewing its entry ban on aircraft belonging to Iran's Mahan air carrier. And we should continue to stand united against Iranian aggression. Uh, European nations have begun to wake up to the fact that Iran is the aggressor, not the aggrieved. And the fact is also clear from Italy's decision not to renew Mahan Air's access to Italy. And we're very grateful for that. Now to Moscow, where Russian President Vladimir Putin condemned last month's attack on Saudi oil facilities, yet insisted in contrast to the United States, Europe and Saudi Arabia itself, that there was no evidence of Iran's responsibility. И потребителям в том числе. Поэтому, еще раз говорю, мы это осуждаем, но мы против того, чтобы перекладывать вину на Иран, поскольку для этого нет никаких доказательств. President Putin, who spoke at an energy forum that is held in Moscow, underscored the importance of preserving agreements regarding the Islamic Republic's nuclear program and subsequently normalized global relations with Tehran, which the Russian leader insisted it will benefit the world's energy security. Будет ли Иран придерживаться со своей стороны принципов, изложенных в СВПД или нет? Это чрезвычайно важный и острый вопрос, который стоит сегодня на повестке дня мировой политики. Но мы очень рассчитываем на то, что договоренности будут сохранены, что ситуация вокруг Ирана в конечном итоге нормализуется. Это благоприятным образом скажется и на мировой энергетике. Speaking at the same energy forum in Moscow, Saudi Energy Minister Abdulaziz bin Salman asserted that Saudi Arabia has shown both resilience and restraint following devastating attacks on the kingdom's Aramco oil installations. I would say that Saudi Arabia is a consumer-oriented country and we have, uh, even during under, dress, uh, under this uh, stressful environment, uh, we have uh, demonstrated our resilience as a government, our constraint as a government, I must say also, uh, and the resilience of the uh, company uh, operating. We're proud of, uh, of the Saudi and non-Saudi uh, that are working for Aramco. The attacks targeted the Abqaiq and Quraysh plants, causing fire and damage that have the crude output of the world's top oil exporter by shutting down some 5.7 million barrels per day of production. This resulted in a global spike in oil prices, which impacted Israel as well. Consumer oil prices in Israel rose by 11 agorot to 6 shekels and 18 agorot, which is equal to 1 euro and 61 cents per liter, or 6 dollars and 70 cents per gallon. Thank you for watching us. I would like to take this opportunity once again to thank all of our supporters as your financial donations as well as your prayers are the reason TV7 Israel News and Jerusalem Studio are made possible. I'd like also to continue to encourage you pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.